starting with two ten notes, and this is the last lesson of the unit, just so everyone is aware. Tomorrow and the next day, we will review for our unit test, okay? And the last thing that you got to learn uh, in this chapter is uh, percent change, or change expressed as a percent. Okay, so... I know it's faded on yours, but that top little part there does say vocab, and uh, it should say percent change. Um, and so the percent change, what, what they're talking about there is when something changes uh, value expressed as a percent, all right? A value change expressed as a percent. It, it's kind of like um, if uh, a cost goes up, right? Like of something, if a cost of a uh, like gas, yeah, gas goes up. Instead of saying gas went up by you know six cents a gallon, you would have to do it as a percentage. All right. So. Um, Oh, that got cut off, didn't it? Why? I don't know why that got cut off. What, what did? Right here. All right. Anyway, uh, at least, at least uh, it has this part. Um, so I don't know why that got cut off there. It looks like when I did it on the copier, something was covering that up. Um, but the percent of change is the amount of increase or decrease divided by the original amount, and then you multiply that by 100, okay? And so that's going to be your percent of change. So, um, like problem one, right, they've got uh, a coat is on sale. The original price of the coat is $82. The sale price is seventy-four fifty. Uh, what is the discount expressed as per, as a percent change? So, like, we can figure out how much the discount is exactly, but they want it as a percentage. So, if it is eighty-two dollars, right, minus seventy-four fifty, because that is the original price. And then to figure out how much difference it is, we'd have to subtract the sale price. And then what we're going to do is then divide that by the original amount, which would have been $82, and multiply that by 100. Now, you can do that all in one swipe in a calculator as long as you use parentheses here. Um, or you can do it all out. So if you do 82 minus 7450, what do you get? 82 minus 7450. 7.1? 7.5, yeah. 750 is the discount, really, right? You, you're saving $7.50. Divide that by 82 and then multiply by 100, and that will give us the percentage of change. So 750 divided by 82 times 100. Okay. Okay. So we'll we'll round that. About 9.4 percent. And is it an increase or a decrease in price? 9.1. 9.1. 9 9 Sorry. Thank you. I thought he said 9.4. He said 9.1. Oh, okay. About 9.1%. And is that going? Is that increasing in price or decreasing? Decreasing. Decreasing, right? It's a sale price. So yeah. you say it's a 9.1% decrease is what you say. So you don't really write these as a negative when they decrease. You just tell them, like, this is 9.1% and it is a decrease. If it increases, you say it's the percentage of increase, like problem two. Okay, so problem two, similar question uh, with prices going up and down, but a store buys an electric guitar for $295. The store then marks that price up to $340. What is the markup expressed as a percent change? So if you're a store, right, 
you want to sell things higher than you purchased them for originally so you can make money. So you got to find, first of all, the difference, right? You're always subtracting the two numbers and you want it to be positive because you, in the end you'll say if it's an increase or decrease. So 340, right? Minus 295. And then what are we going to divide it by? What's the original this time? I mean, what is it? Yeah, 295 is the original cost this time. All right. Um, oops, and then we're going to multiply that by 100 in a minute. Okay, but let's, let's simplify. 340 minus 295 is really 45. Then we're going to divide that by 295 and multiply by 100. And, um, okay, so if I round that about 15.3%, and are we on an increase or decrease? This time it's increase because they want to mark that up so they can make money. So, simple formula here, uh, and it's the one that you didn't even have to copy it down, but if, uh, you want to write this in a different way. This is the formula up here, okay? You want the amount of increase or decrease, so you subtract, right? And then you divide that by the original, that's important, and then multiply by 100 to change it to a percentage. You subtract, divide, then multiply. Yep, subtract, divide, then multiply. Exactly. Good. Now, a little, a little hint on the subtraction, right? Some, of, some people get um, confused which number goes first in the subtraction. Remember, your percentage is always coming out positive, so you just do the larger number minus the smaller number because in the end, you're going to say increase or decrease there. That's why you're not getting a negative. All right, the other last thing that we need to talk about is something called um, error, relative error and percent error. So a lot of companies... Um, they allow a certain amount of error for their product. So like even though like you see a picture frame that says it's an 8 by 10 frame, there's a certain amount of leeway that's allowed for it to pass through inspection, right? Because they're not all going to be exactly perfect. It's just life. Um, but then they have quality control to say like, okay, this is a little, this is over what we allot the error to be. Um, and so this is kind of the idea of that. So your measured or your estimated value. So what you think you want it to be. So for eight by 10, right? If we're saying eight, we're saying eight wide. So we want it to be eight. But what if the actual value turned out to be 7.75? Then you subtract that, and it's the, it's the absolute value, meaning it's the positive version of that, okay? Same thing. It's got to be positive. And you divide it by the actual value, and that is going to be the relative error, right? This is relative error. Important. What would we do to make that a percentage, then? Percent error right here, the next one, would mean take that value, this value right here, and multiply it by 100, just like we did on the front, okay? Relative error is before we multiply one, by 100. Percent error is when we multiply by 100. So you've got to pay attention to the question. So like the first one, this says finding percent error, meaning you're going to have to multiply your answer by 100 in the end, okay? So... Um, this is a really good SAT question, by the way. They love these. A decorator estimates that a rectangular rug is 5 by 8, right? The rug is actually 4 by 8. What is the percent error in the estimated area? Okay, so this is what we got to do. So the actual, if you want to put that in there, um, so the measure to the estimated. So when you measure it, our 4 feet is the one that's different, right? So 4 is going to be our measured. You actually measured, and it's 4 feet. We're going to subtract 5. This is your actual, or I mean, ooh. 
Sorry, I did that the wrong way around, guys. All right. Five is, I'm sorry, our estimated area. So this is what we want it to be. When you actually measure it, right, it turns out to be four if you're a decorated decorator, minus four. And then we're going to divide that by the actual, which is four. Now, this has got to be positive. Well, five minus four is one. That's positive. Divided by four. So as a fraction, that's one-fourth, right? But we want to uh, change that to a percent. So one divided by four is 0 0.25. If you times that by 100, what's the percent error? 25%. Okay, now, this is kind of like what they do and what I was talking about here. Uh, for problem four now, there uh, are maximum and minimum dimensions that pass through inspection, right? Same with, like, food, right? Pizzas and stuff like that. They can only give you your pizza. Like, they can't rip you off. They can't say it's a 20-inch pizza and give you an 18. And they can't, they could say it's a 20-inch pizza and give you a 24. You probably wouldn't complain about that. But there's, like, a relative error that has to happen. Otherwise, people are going to be upset. Um, say, has that happened? Has that happened before where you're like, oh, this is the wrong size? Um, so they measure that stuff out ahead of time for all the franchises. Same with like quality control. So like you're framing a poster and measure the length of the poster to be 18.5 inches to the nearest half inch. So you measured it to the nearest half inch. That's not the actual. What are the minimum and maximal, maximum possible lengths of this poster then? So if you rounded it to the nearest half inch, what's the minimum it could have been? Go ahead, Emma. Is that 15? It's 18. This is, so 18.5 is what you rounded it to. And the minimum, it could be 18.0? That would be, that would be... 18.5. Okay, so 18.45, yeah, is, what about 18.3? Would that round up to 18.5 or 18? 18.3 rounds up to 18.5, right? At what point would we round down to 18 to the nearest half inch? 18.24, right? Right? So... But we'll, we'll do that. Um, we can say 18.2, okay, is the lowest amount. So that then you would round down. So the next one up, right, our minimum has to be 18.3 is our minimum amount, right? That rounds to 18.5. What's the maximum that you would round down? 18.7, because once you hit 18.8, what happens? You round up. So this is the range. So it says, what are the minimum? The minimum length that that could have been was 18.3. And the maximum is 18.7. That's how quality control works. So that you are within a certain range to be accurate enough. So that things fit. Okay? Um, now, that's to the nearest tenth. You could go out so many places, which would be kind of annoying, but like nearest tenth is kind of the default in math. All right, last one. Um, greatest possible percent error. So this diagram, right, is going to show the dimensions of a gift box, 5 by 6 by 12. What is the greatest possible percent error in calculating the volume of the gift box? All right, so actually we're going to save this one. Um, until tomorrow because I that's got all three dimensions. So we'll save that one. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to start on 2-10 practice, okay? So everybody have that? If you didn't grab it on the way in, grab it. Is it homework? Uh, well, it's classwork for right now. It might be homework. We'll see.
Okay, ready? So I want to start you on each section here a second. What? What is that? Oh, that was from um, when we graded the other week. Sorry. Okay. So the first section, these are evens here. So let's start with number two. I want you to know how to do this. I will start you out. So it says, tell whether each percent change is an increase or a decrease. Then find the percent change. Round to the nearest percent. So whole number here. All right. So if your original amount, it doesn't even give you a story, is 72. And your new amount is 67. Okay? Remember... What do we do to find percent change? What do we do to find percent change? Go, Cody. Yep. Yep, 72 minus 67. And what do we divide it by? 72. The original. Yep, the 72. And then we're going to, once we do that, we're going to times it by 100. Okay? So 72 minus 67 is 5, right? Then we got to divide that by 72 and multiply by 100. We are going to the nearest percentage, though. Raise it. 6.9 6. is not the nearest percent, though. 7. The nearest percentage would be 7%. And then you want to say, is that an increase or a decrease? Increase. Decrease. Because it goes down. Yeah, that's right. So this is a 7% decrease. Do you understand how to do the first section? Yes. Yeah. Evens. Yep, evens. Okay, so that's how you do 2, 4, 6, and 8. All right. Can I suggest? Yep. Thank you. Uh, you also do the same thing for 10. Uh, and... 12. They're just in a story problem version. Okay? So, let's look at 14%. Percent error. Okay? Percent error is almost the exact same, right? So, number 14. You estimate that a salesman is 45 years old. He's actually 38 years old. That's rude. <laughs> Well, maybe he has not taken care of himself. Maybe he has done lots of drugs and now he looks old. Okay, hopefully yeah, not. Rude. You guess like 10 years old. <laughs> and then, that doesn't mean you but told him that though either. You didn't tell him that. Maybe you just thought it in your head. Okay, so how do we do percent error here? What do we do? This was the second one, but it's almost the same. So like if you look at your notes, right? Here's your relative error, and percent error is multiplying by 100. So you really do the same thing. All right, so what do you want me to subtract? 45 minus 38, and we're going to divide that by which one? 45. The actual value, the actual. How old is he actually? 38. 38. So we got to divide it by 38. And then in the end, uh, since it's asking you for a percent error, you have to then multiply by 100. If it was asking you for relative error, you don't. Okay, 45 minus 38 is 7, divided by 38, and then times that by 100. Again, round to the nearest whole percent. 7 divided by 38 times 100. What do you get, Donovan? 18. What? 18? Yeah, 18. Okay. Okay, yep. 18%. And then it doesn't tell you if you have to do an increase or a decrease here, right? Because this is an error, not an increase or a decrease. So you are off by 18% in your estimation, is what that's saying. It's not that his age is increasing or decreasing, it's how much you were wrong <laughs> in your estimation. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to do evens on the front today, okay? Just the front? Yep. Just the front. Just the front. Yeah. Okay, so you guys have to do 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 is what's left. Sound good? All right. Good deal.
Alright. And we are definitely not doing the back. Unless you really um, feel